If somebody were to say to you, what are your six favourite hymns, what would you say? Over the next few weeks, I'll be discovering the favourite hymns and the innermost thoughts of people like Terry Waite, Marty Kane and Roy Castle. I'm grateful for what I've had and I value every day, every minute as it comes along. I'm a walking cliché. Alan Titchmarsh discovers the hymns which have brought Roy Castle sweet inspiration. A new series begins tomorrow at 6.25 on BBC One. Africa's painful transition from colonial rule to democracy is explored on BBC Two shortly in Fine Cut. Movie action on BBC One. Nothing I can't do with the race car. You can drive beyond the limits of the tires, the engine. You build me a car and I'll win Daytona next year. I was desperate to get your attention. You shouldn't be driving a car anywhere, not on a road, not on a racetrack, and not in a parking lot. Days of Thunder, the Saturday night movie on BBC One. Now on BBC One, the end of an era for Esther and Co. That's life. <laughs> had this week we have some good news for you and some bad news the bad news is that this is the last that's life as we know it oh. Wait. the good news is that next Sunday we have a special celebration called that's life all over which is a reunion of all our friends from Cyril Fletcher to wet 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 plus a few of our favorite memories and a few of our most embarrassing moments also mind you we have had a few embarrassing moments from this series and we'd like to show you one now that Gavin doesn't know. We record it. <laughs> this character is Killjoy. And you may remember that he caused havoc in one of the local London councils. What you don't know is where he got his voice. <laughs> So completely delighted that you know the head of our department is here in the gallery watching this tonight. <laughs> I really hope he he was, was hoping impressed for a, by that. For a job on oh, oh, I think you'll get it now. What you about you, Adrian? Any embarrassing moments? Yeah, probably the most embarrassing that's happened to me this week was going through my uh, files, clearing my desk, when I came across this picture. Recognise the face? <laughs> <laughs> well, look at those legs, forget the face, dear me. <laughs> How well I, could I remember it be? those I remember those boots. But don't think we're the only people with embarrassing memories. Gavin and Adrian went out onto the streets to see what they could winkle out of passers-by. And everyone they met had some terrible blush-making memory to share with us. My daughter was small at the time. Yeah. We were in Sainsbury's. Yeah. And he asked my, I asked my daughter to go and ask my husband if I'd forgotten anything. And he went down and whispered in her ear and said, Yeah, you forgot the condoms. And she yelled it out from the other end of the shop. <laughs> We were going to the hospital at Woolwich, and uh, it was uh, when we got there, there was a crowd of people there, and the van pulled up. I was on the passenger side, and as I got out, I jumped straight into a sit with dish. <laughs> Carlton were doing a, a film on the good sex guy, and they was helping out. And uh, I think the most difficult time, actually, not on film. I can't, I can't say this on film. Um, oh, of course you can. The most difficult time was, was, um, it's a very difficult situation when you've got a lot of people around you in the studio, very naked, and you're trying to carry on in normal sort of 
working order. You know, Adrian? that is not be a new career. My wife is finishing in a couple of weeks, and Gavin and I are um, basically... Looking for work? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this sounds good. Yeah? I don't know if you got the right proportions there. What sort of proportions do you need? Um, well, just a good, uh, good figure, really. Basically, you're saying that we both look... Um, Old and past it. No, I'm sorry. That's very hard. Oh. You're right. Oh, you did put me on that is embarrassing. Right. My most embarrassing moment was go when I went to a gay club and a gay boy asked me to dance. I thought about it for a moment and I thought, yeah, I'm quite safe. So I had a cheek to cheek dance and teased him and promised I'd make a man out of him. Oh. Only to find later that I'd actually been dancing with a woman. That was my most embarrassing moment ever. And how did you handle it? What did you do? I ran for my life. <laughs> I left the club quicker than I came into it. Well, she's here this afternoon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Excuse me, this is where I exit stage right again. Gentlemen, very quickly, what has been your most embarrassing moment? If I could assist you, I most certainly would. But I think if I do assist you, it will end up on the TV. I perish the thought. Oh, no, we won't show it. You can believe us. You can trust us. <laughs> oh, look. Oh, look. MP Charlie One, can you repeat, please? Charlie Joseph, please. Please, 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 one, two, three, one, two, two, one, three, 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 one, it was at this moment the police realised they were at the wrong jewellers. <laughs> <laughs> they should have been two streets away. So there they go, speeding off. But I have to say, they were brave enough to come back and talk to us all over again. We did a lot right, of that is my embarrassing moment. <laughs> 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 We think our policemen are wonderful. And now we have a tremendous pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome tonight's special guest star, Miss June Whitfield. Yeah. We're letting it all hang out tonight, June. Yes. Everyone's embarrassing moment, we're sharing. Have you got any embarrassing moments? Well, mine is really a very mild one. Oh. About two years ago, I was playing a fairy in pantomime mm -hmm. and singing a song uh, to the children about a white rabbit, the magic rabbit. They had to tell me when they saw the rabbit, and the rabbit appeared in the box and in the stalls and everywhere. And I kept saying, like, as fairies do, you know, I can't see him. Where is he? You know, will you tell me where he is? He's behind you. I know where. I can't see him. And a little voice about two rows back in the stalls said suddenly, silly old fool. <laughs> <laughs> Over your not June, we have this week's collection of viewers cutting some things they'd like you to read. I would be delighted. In I the meantime, win by way. ladies and gentlemen, Miss June Whitfield. <laughs> beginning of June, Wimbledon is nearly here and that means it's strawberry time, except that Mary Pritchard from Wells in Somerset wrote to us and said, You get strawberries in everything these days, milkshakes, even soap. Can you sort out the real strawberries from the phony ones? So we tried. We spoke to Derek Buck, who is a food safety officer. He works in Brent in London. We said, when you buy things like strawberry soap and strawberry milkshake, are they made out of real strawberries? He said. If you look at the labels, they'll tell you that. But you have to understand the code. The words strawberry flavour mean they don't have to contain any strawberries at all. And that's a very good example. It's... Bird's Angel Delight. Strawberry flavour, no added sugar, no artificial colours or preservatives. And no strawberries in it whatsoever. That's not all. When they say on the packet... No added sugar. They don't mean it's just the natural fruit that's sweetening it. They mean it's sweetened with... Artificial sweeteners. And when they say... No, no artificial colours or preservatives. They don't mean it's coloured strawberry pink by pink strawberries, because, of course, there aren't any in it. They mean it's pink because of... Colours, natto and carmine. In fact, if you have a look at the ingredients, you'll see that it is quite a complicated set of chemicals. And somewhere there in the middle, you'll see... Flavourings. 
which is the strawberry flavour. But when we rang Angel Delight and asked them what that is, all they could tell us is what it's not. It's not real strawberry. No actual strawberries, as we say, go near the product. What it could be is any of this lot. We got this list from the Flavour and Extract Association in Washington, D.C., because often you do have to ring up America to get this kind of information. Of course, British firms guard this as a trade secret. But tonight, as it's our last show, as a special punishment, Adrian is now going to read to you oh. all these complicated scientific names. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much, Esther. Imitation Strawberry Flavour Corps, Preline, train number Fermention Company, alcohol, 95%. Agitate and heat until dissolved. Then add propylene glycol, glycyl acetate, acid, aldehyde C16, benzyl acetate, vanillin, methyl cinnamate, methyl anthrolate, methyl heptine carbonate, methyl silitate, I, I, something like Ionanin, <laughs> <laughs> which is, I think is an island off Africa, um, <laughs> alcohol, <laughs> iron and beta, aldehyde C14, diectol, anethol, or uh, you could have even more natural flavour, wild strawberry, that's ethyl hepaltate, I used to go out with her, oil, <laughs> <laughs> oil and sweet birch, aldehyde C14, cinnamol isobutyrate, or butyrate, ethyl vanillin, I'll kill you for this, Esther, corpse praline, <laughs> trade name, dissolved in cinnamol isovalerate, uh, does that say diprol? Dip, dip a propol or something, <laughs> ketanone or ketone methyl. Say it in Spanish, say it in Spanish. Eh, deprohal le ketan. Methyl agal ketan. Hey, forget the Spanish, that's next week. Dactol, ethyl valerate, aldehyde C16, ethyl lactate, alcohol 95%, propylene glycol. <laughs> Just strawberry flavour, and it may be why birds say on the Angel Delight packet, much more than a dessert. Now, <laughs> we are not saying there's anything wrong with all these chemicals. We're just saying that words like no added sugar, no artificial colour, or preservative may make you think this is a natural product just made of strawberries. Whereas, in fact, the words strawberry flavour are the way they tell you there aren't any strawberries at all. Except that uh, Roundtree's jelly strawberry flavour does contain the juice from real strawberries. And you can tell that from the packet. But once again, you have to understand the code. Explain it. The picture of the strawberries. You aren't allowed to put a picture on any ingredient that isn't actually in it. Well, how much strawberry juice is there in it? Well, not a lot. The uh, ingredients, there they are, are listed in order. The most at the top of the list, the least at the bottom. So if you look at this label, you'll see that the biggest ingredient is sugar and sugar and sugar, then water and gelatine and so on. And strawberry juice is the last but two, just before flavouring and lemon juice. Roundtree's told us that they have to put in the flavouring because actual strawberries don't have much flavour. In other words, real strawberries don't taste nearly mu as much like strawberries as this list of chemicals does. Only they wouldn't tell us exactly which of these chemicals they use because that, they say, is a trade secret. Well, let's see if we can guess which of these has ever seen a strawberry and which hasn't. Strawberry flavour laces. Picture of an elephant on it. That may contain elephant juice, but no strawberry. <laughs> Frill. Fr there it, or fridge, even. <laughs> Frill to fridge. Fridge. Fresh classic shake. Strawberry flavour. Fresh strawberry flavour. Semi-skimmed pasteurised milk drink. And we don't know what, exactly what is fresh about it, because the press office told us fridge has never seen a real strawberry from start to finish. However, she did tell us the flavour is nature identical, which is a very nice phrase, isn't it? Ovaltine's options, choc and strawberry, hot chocolate with a smooth strawberry taste, and their picture of strawberries. Which means that therefore it does contain oil from real strawberries, what they call on their label natural strawberry flavour, but... Body Shop strawberry bubbles, fruity bubbles fragranced with strawberry. Oh no they're not, according to Body Shop none of their strawberry products ever comes into contact with a real strawberry. Perfumed with a mouth-watering strawberry fragrance. That certainly isn't made out of strawberries. You may remember a rather lovely oldie English folk song. As I went down to Strawberry Fair In the light of modern technology, we thought tonight we would rewrite it. As I went down to Corpse Praline Alcohol, propylene, glycol, glacial acetic acid, aldehyde, C16 Benzyl acetate, vanillin, methyl cinnamate, methyl and Granulate methyl, heptine carbonate, methyl salicylate, ionone, beta anhydride C14, diacetyl anethyl, polyrubble roll. June. And do you know 
there's a technical term for all those additives. They're called esters. <laughs> it's true. Now for a major sporting moment. It's a brand new British sport, a form of wrestling. And here to show us how it's done is George Burgess. <laughs> Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is a quick demonstration of toe wrestling between last Saturday's, <laughs> last Saturday's first official world champion, Alan Nasty Nash, <laughs> and the losing finalist, John Cool Clark. <laughs> now you know the rules, lads. As soon as I say toes away, it's done as arm wrestling. You try to force one another's foot down onto the toe wrestling mat. But our slogan is, there's no arm in toe wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> toes away. Keep these feet up. Keep your bottoms on the ground, your hands flat on the ground. <laughs> keep pushing. Keep these feet up. Right, Alan, Alan, keep your, keep your arm, keep your arm, keep, keep your bottom on the ground. Let's have a, let's have a good, let's have a good clean feet. It looks as if John's got it. It looks as if John's... I think John... No! It's a toe down to Alan Nasty Nash. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That is an amazing feat. <laughs> ah, but the shoe must go on, Esther. <laughs> Must indeed. Kevin actually has gone undercover this week, although this time you haven't had to disguise yourself as a salesman, have you? And no, I didn't this time, because actually in this case, which is a damp-proof company in Northampton, some of the ex-salesmen were so disgusted at what they were being asked to do, they got in touch with us. Now, one of them is Chris Manley, who's a very experienced salesman. And when he joined this company, Charwell Property Preservation in Northampton, he was astonished at what they were asking him to say. Explain to us why. Well, firstly, you have to look at this piece of equipment. It's a sonic damp detector, and it measures current and conductivity. And for that, it's actually quite useful. But it's no good at all at accurately measuring damp, because it just goes off with a frightening wail. Gosh, that is a rather frightening noise. Well, fear is the essence of this sales technique. Jeff Bateman, who trains a salesman, and three of them have described the training to us, shows a salesman how to terrify people so that they think their houses are filled with rising damp and penetrating damp. For instance, if the house has a wooden floor, Mr. Bateman says what you do is put the fear of God into people by jumping up and down and saying, with the damp in this house, the joys holding the floor up would rot and then the floor would collapse. And Mr. Bateman is actually quite a big chap, so when he jumps, the earth really moves. So it's a combination of the squealing machine and the jumping salesman. And don't forget the brick splashing. The salesmen are supposed to throw a cup of water over the outside wall to show how much water the bricks soak up, and then tell people that to protect the bricks, they have to coat them with damp proofing. So by the time they finish, people believe that their house is absolutely riddled with damp with rising damp, penetrating damp, and the only way to protect their homes would be to pay Charwell Property Preservation anything from 700 to 3,000 pounds to get them to treat it for them. You went up to meet one of the people who endured this sales technique. I did. I took an independent surveyor with me, Peter Dickinson, and our viewer's name is Diane Daniels. She saw an advert this company put into a local paper, paper in Bedfordshire, just like this one. All it offers is a free damp test, no obligation. So she rang up, made an appointment for them to come and see her in her home in Sandy in Bedfordshire. Where did the salesman check in here, Diane? Um, he checked all around the plug socket around here. And did you get a reading there? Yes, we got a very high reading. And what did he say about that? Um, he advised us not to use the socket because it was so wet around it. How did you feel at that point when he told you not to use an electrical socket? Um, very shocked because obviously we use the socket quite a lot. Well, we're getting absolutely nothing now from this meter. Now, this is your youngest son's bedroom, and there are quite some quite obvious signs of what has been some sort of condensation, the peeling wallpaper, and some black spot mould behind the wallpaper there. Did the salesman use his meter here? Yes. And did he get a reading? Yes, quite a high reading. Well, let's see what we get now. Not a sausage. 
Now, Peter, what's your professional opinion of what's wrong with this room? Well, the tests that I've done don't suggest any moisture is there at all. And that evidence there is probably one of the best examples of condensation that we found in the house. It's very, very typical. It's a black spot mould, which is typical of condensation. The moisture is up here is most probably coming from the bathroom. And closing the bathroom door when you're bathing would help. Installing an extractor fan in there would help to remove the moist air. What sort of things was he saying all the time about his product or, or about the, the condition of your house? Um, well, he did say when he'd gone on through that this was the worst but one house that he'd ever done. And the house that was worse than this was nearly derelict, How which made you? us feel really good.